Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. This is the monitor off my wife's computer, the one she uses at the office. You'll sometimes see her sitting back there behind me. She's not here now, but yeah, I'm sure you've seen her. So yesterday morning, she thought her computer wasn't working, but in actual fact, the computer was working and the monitor wasn't. So this seems to be dead. It has um, just a normal 220 volts AC connector on it. So let's just plug it in and we'll see what is or isn't happening. Okay. So power is plugged in. This is the power button and I'm pretty sure it must be the power LED. And it's not lighting up, nothing's happening. So this basically appears to be dead. And you'd like it working, so um, let's see what we can do with it, yeah? The first thing I'll need to figure out is how to get into it. I think if we take the uh, stand off first, that might uh, help. And then it looks like it's probably just clipped together, unless there's something under here. I'm not sure what resolution this monitor goes to. She uses it there 1920 by 1080. And basically she uses this machine to do administrative work, you know, Excel and words, answering emails and all those things that you need to do to run a business, basically. Okay, so we've got that off. And I think this probably clips together. It looks like there's a, a bit of a seam along here. I don't see anything. Yeah, there's no screws. So I think we're going to have to... Uh, take this off yeah this is all molded together this is all one part so that's not going to help us and i honestly don't think there's anything behind here it doesn't feel like a, a screw or a bolt i'm not sure how, how easy it would be to remove that anyway let's see if we can use a spudger or something to get this thing to open up i recently bought a couple of new sets of these from aliexpress man we're all broken basically but i've had them for some years so that happens with these things now let's see if we can get inside this. Yeah, that seems to be working well enough. I've managed to just get to the top of it, so we'll try and go all the way around with this thing. And hopefully we'll get inside this. Try the other one. Okay, well that one just broke. It's another one. <laughs> okay, not sure if that was actually one of the new ones. Try, see if we get on this side. Yep, I have it. This is definitely one of the new ones. It has like a pick thing on the other end. This does seem to work well, rather well. By the way, very cheap, but this one seems to be doing the job. Okay. I quite like this one, actually. But this just seems to be getting the front off. I'm not sure this is actually going to help us unless we, get, unless we have to get the screen out to get at this thing. I have seen such things before now. Okay. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, this lifts out. Okay. That lifts out. Looks like it comes the other way. Okay. So, if we undo this screw, I'm sure there's a, this cable will unplug and this one, take this cover off, this will unplug. So I can get into it, I think. Actually, I may be just as easy to get into it this way. Yeah. Okay. So I should be able to get this off here. Okay. Just a bit of sticky tape, basically. And the other one, same. No, this we can just unplug from here. Okay. Now let's see, what do we have? Well, the power comes into here, so I'm sure we can say this is the power supply. This could have a high voltage in the main capacitors because 
I plugged the mains in and nothing really happened. So have a look how it goes. At the very least, I would like to check the main smoothing capacitors for any high voltage and preferably not using my finger to do that check. Yeah, <laughs> preferably using something a bit better like a multimeter. Okay, so we have that. If we just move these wires out of the way, yeah, I should be able to lift this off. Okay. And we have a plastic sheet on here. So this is obviously to act as a insulation. The PCB is obviously upside down. Still being a little bit wary of it. This must be the low voltage side. The cable comes from here. And this must be the high voltage side because the mains comes in here. And I think the high voltage capacitor is here somewhere. Does this come off? It's just stuck. Well, the whole thing seems to come out actually. Uh, yeah, the whole thing comes out like so. This metal screen obviously is connected to Earth. This needs to come off because you can see the plug is there. I can't unplug it without taking this off. I can see the high voltage capacitor. I don't know if you guys can see it. You probably can't, but it's just down here. So if we can get this plastic off, I can measure for any high voltages. Okay, the actual legs of the capacitor are just there. Let's have a look. Okay. Right, so. Here is the high voltage capacitor. You can even see it's actually marked on the board. It's here, yeah, C105. So let's just make sure there's no nasty surprises waiting in there for us. I have the meter on volts range there. What's in our capacitor? About 13 volts. So we know power was getting into this. I mean, it's practically discharged now. So something is discharging it, which is taking rather a long time. Let's use something to do it a little bit quicker. So this is like a, I think it's a 2.7K resistor. Not that there is a dangerous voltage in this now, but it's not easy to make measurements when there's still voltage in the circuit. It messes up resistance measurements. Okay, so that's gone. Now we can take this off the monitor, I think. Yeah, we'll just unscrew the other screws and disconnect it. Okay, so we have the PCB. Let's have a look what we have. This is obviously the main switching transformer. We have a negative temperature coefficient thermistor to stop the inrush currents being too high. The main capacitor. This is just input filters. The fact we had voltage in the capacitor tells me that the power is getting in. There's a bridge rectifier. These look like the probably current sensing resistors all in parallel there, going to the negative. Yes, that's the negative end of the bridge rectifier. I'll get under the magnifier in a minute. Current sensor resistors, switching MOSFET, and this will be the chip yeah ic101 that is the controller chip that's driving that and that is then switching the current into the primary of the transformer these things i'm not sure what they're doing they're just hollow there's nothing under there there's look like heat sinks but there's nothing attached to them okay not exactly sure what they're doing so this is switching the primary of this transformer this is the secondary. These things are diodes, yes, D110112. So these are your output rectifiers. Then we have lots of capacitors. We have another little coil here. And we have an opto isolator. Uh, and that is probably the voltage reference TL431. We'll get the magnifier, but about something like that. Okay. This other coil. 
Well, there's another IC here, and there's another switching MOSFET. So I think probably this is one voltage supply coming out of here into some of these capacitors. And then that chip is driving this with the MOSFET like a little buck regulator and generating another output. So I'm fairly sure this will have more than one output voltage. One will be coming from this transformer and one will be coming from this chip and this MOSFET and this coil which will be like a, a little buck converter, DC to DC converter, I would imagine, yeah. That's what I think we have. These are 35 volt, they're all 35 volt. That's a 100 volt capacitor. Oh, I wonder if this is, yeah. The LED backlighting in the panel require quite high voltage to drive it. So I think this is like a step up converter and probably generating the backlight voltage. You can see there a hundred volt capacitor. So I reckon that's what that's actually doing as well. So I think we know pretty much what we have here. Now then, what's wrong with it? Well, power gets in, but it's not running. Yeah. Let's see if we can see any shorts. So without knowing exactly where the outputs are, the best place to check is across those capacitors. Okay. What we got? Well, the capacitors all along here, so let's have a look. There's no short there. No short there. How about on this 100 volt capacitor? Is there any volts? Is there any voltage in that? Come think about it. That 100 volt capacitor. Let's have a quick look. Could be another one that could bite you on the hand, yeah? No, there's no power in it. Okay. It's not short. So I don't seem to have any short circuits on this. Possibly it's getting power coming in, but it's just not starting, yeah? Okay, let's disconnect if we can. Okay, we have it. And the earth wire. We can have a closer look, so this thing AZ431, yeah, that's like a TL431, just a different manufacturer. That's the voltage reference for the opto isolator. These capacitors are probably all in parallel. Let's have a look. Well, those two certainly are, so that's one voltage rail. Oh, yeah, then we get the inductor, then this one. Is this maybe another voltage rail? Oh, it tells us. That's good. V plus, ground, pulse width modulation, enable. Okay. That's what we have here. So I think we can just test this on its own. Yeah, we can uh, stick this on the board. Yeah. I mean, maybe this needs pulse width modulation I suspect this is to do with the supply to the backlighting and this is being driven from the thing it's powering up the other circuit board but unless there's any V plus it's not going to power up yeah let's have a look okay so from the other side we know the second pin here and the fourth pin of ground and that'll probably go to one of these wire links yeah these so this is a good ground point. We can put our black meter probe on here. When we measure the output, the actual output voltage is on uh, the top two. Is that this link? Yeah, so if we just measure from here to here, that we can measure the output easily. We're not gonna slip on any of the pins. So I think we'll power this up and let's see without any load attached to it. What does it do? Yeah, do we get an output? I'm sure the enable thing is purely for the supply to the backlighting, this pulse width modulation thing. 
But as I said, if there's no power getting to the main board, it can't send any signal back. So we, we're going to have to have V plus first, okay? I've just noticed this is actually a fuse, but I'm sure the fuse will be okay because there was voltage in this thing, yeah, unless it's been there for a very long time, days. Okay, let's have a look. So this is the fuse. No, it's not there, it's here. Yeah, fuse reads okay. I did expect it would. Okay. Most likely, then, this either isn't starting at all. Okay. Or there's a short circuit on the output to the monitor, to the control board. Or there's a short circuit in this lot. So that effectively it's putting the load on this output because this voltage rail drives this hook regulator. So that's about it, really. To figure this out, I think we'll connect the power up, we'll use the light bulb, the current limiter. I don't think it's gonna actually go bang, but really this will help because if the light bulb flashes then goes out, we know it's charged this capacitor, we know there's power got into this. So let's connect the mains, okay? We'll just put the camera where you can see the current limiter, which is on top of the variac there. And then we'll switch this on. Okay, let's see what it actually does. Well, it flashed and went out. So we know there is power getting into the board. If we look across this main capacitor, we should see quite a high voltage. Sorry, let's put the uh, camera back onto the multimeter. So let's have a look now on this large capacitor. Do you have any power? Yeah. Yeah, there's about four volts, and so it's charging and discharging. That suggests to me the power supply actually does run. Is there any voltage on the output, considering there's no load, although this is a load? Let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, let's switch it back on again, and then let's see if the power supply is running. That's another possibility. This power supply is running just fine, and the problem is in the monitor. Okay, let's have a look. So we're on. We should have a high voltage here, 320 volts. It's on the output. Yeah, five volts, so it's a five volt supply. So it looks like the power supply actually has nothing wrong with it. That's discharging the wave because it is running. It says minus just because I have the leads the wrong way around. Yeah, that's now going away. We suggest that this is drawing power as well because there's no load on here. Okay. It's, gradually, it's becoming safe. The voltage is getting low. Okay. I'll connect this back to the monitor and let's have a look. I've just noticed I have to put this uh, connector on before I screw this on, by the way. So uh, while I'm just doing this, some of you guys will say in the comments, I know, that I would have checked the output of the power supply before I removed it. Yeah, sometimes so would I. It's just, you know, you follow your nose with this, you just go one way or the other. In this occasion, I thought most likely this was a dead power supply, it appears not to be, but you don't always go down the right way, guys, and it's not a problem yet. I don't like think, don't beat yourself up saying, well, I should have done this first. Or maybe you could, you know, maybe think, well, that next time I'll do such a thing first. But don't beat yourself up over it and don't beat me up over it, yeah? It's just uh, how you go about the job. Sometimes you'll do it the right way first, sometimes you won't. There'll be many, many, many occasions where it is the power supply faulty, so you were wasting your time messing around, yeah? <laughs> You've just got to look at it that way. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and power this up with the thing attached. I'll just put a couple of screws in for now because I might end up unscrewing this again. Just prior to that, I want to check the short circuits on the output of here in case the problem is down here and it's a short. Okay, so we can see where the outputs are. Let's just check that. Resistance range. 
ground out. Well, there's no short circuit on there, okay? There's no short on that output. There could be a short on the LED output. Yeah, it's possible that there is a short. Not on the board, that'll read fine, I'm sure. But possibly there is a short on the LED backlight in itself. I mean, we can just have a quick look at this. That needs a very high resistance, mega ohms. That's what you'd expect, to be honest. So we won't attach our screen for the moment. We'll just power this up and we will see if we have anything on the output, okay? I'll just position this to cover up the high voltage stuff. We'll just, you know, play safe, guys, basically. If you don't need the high voltage stuff exposed, don't expose it. Uh, if you don't need to, don't. Let's see what's happening with our power supply. I'll just zoom down a little bit. We'll switch on and do we have five volts coming out of this? Let's see. Well, we do have a five volt supply going into the monitor. Oh, where's the on off switch? So we do have power going in, but no power. Ah, the power light's on now. Okay, so the power light is lighting up. Has this thing got a problem with the backlighting in the screen causing it not to power on? That seems quite likely. Let's see. So I'll just connect the backlight. I won't connect the actual. LVDS cable, the video cable at the moment. I just want to see if the backlights are working. So we can just balance this on top of here for now. We can apply the power again and let's see if the backlighting is working on the screen. Okay, so power on. I can see the LED, it's just uh, there. You can see the LED. Well, it looks like it doesn't light up now. Yeah, it looks like when I have the pad, when I have the screen on, it's not lighting up. Can we check the voltage? Let's move the screen a little bit further away and balance it so it doesn't fall off the desk. Yeah, let's have a look. The green LED is on now. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was on before and we just couldn't see it with the light. Switch it off again. I'm going to connect the screen. Okay, that's plugged in. We have no video source, but I think the uh, manufacturer's logo comes up when you power this up. Or it should do. Yeah, nothing shorting against anything. Power on. Now we don't get the green LED. I've just put a cloth on the bench so I can just rest the screen against it so it won't get scratched. So we can try this again. So we'll take the connector off to the panel. Let's check this green LED, we'll power it up. Yeah, green LED is on. I don't know if you can see it very well, I think you're probably just about to see it now. It is on. Switch off. So that's with the backlighting attached, yeah. We'll attach the actual LVDS. The data cable. Well, this also powers the actual uh, panel itself. This cable sends the actual video data and also power to this. Okay, and we'll try again. Green lights on, it's intermittent guys. Uh, green lights on. We've got uh, anything on the screen. 
Switch on. Green lights on. Ah! So what was wrong with this monitor? You can see with yourself, guys, it didn't work. The only thing I think was just had like a bad connection somewhere. It's hard to give a really good explanation of that. I mean, it's working. You can see it's working. It wasn't working previously. And it seems a little bit intermittent. Because this is my wife's, so she uses it on her desk behind me. I think realistically, the only thing I can probably do is to just connect it back up for her. And let her try it. Yeah, let her, let her use it. If it uh, plays up again, we'll make another video with it. It's going to stay here. But in the meantime, yeah, why why is it now working? Yeah, I'll put the missing screws back in, by the way. I haven't put them all in. Switch it on. I saw the backlight actually flick. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, guys, when you're doing repair work, this sort of thing happens, and... <laughs> I joke sometimes and say, like, I scare things into submission, yeah? Because they know what I'm doing. They just start to work because they, know they haven't got a chance not to anymore, yeah? Sometimes I joke like that. But I honestly can't say why this is now working. And when this sort of thing does happen, I mean, there's no point, like, busting a gut over it, yeah? If it ain't broke, don't try fix it. The only thing you can realistically do now is to put it on soap test, just connect it to something and just leave it on for a day or two. That's all you can do. There's no point when you have this sort of problem. Trying to go further with it, yeah? Thinking, well, why is it now working? Why didn't it work? And probing around stuff, guys, yeah? You're wasting your time, really. I mean, you can try waggling a few wires and see if it'll go off. Um, but in this case, I think I'll just give it back to the wife and see what she says. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of useful information, even if it wasn't much of a repair. We've talked a bit about what to do when this sort of thing happens. And get into the comments below, guys. I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now.